This chapter is called Process Control. We will begin it by finding out what a process actually is, and then the rest of the chapter will be devoted to finding out how to control such processes. Let's begin. The first question that we have to ask ourselves is, what is a process? Well, a process is simply a running program. And I want to put special emphasis on the word running. To understand this a little better, Let's take a typical program, say LS, and on a given Unix system of, say, 100 users logged in simultaneously, perhaps five of them might be simultaneously running the LS program. So the question is this. How many LS programs are there on that Unix system? How many LS programs? I want to put special emphasis on the word program. How many LS programs are there? And the answer is, there is only one. There's only ever one LS program on a typical Unix system. However, because five particular users are running the LS program at any given moment, that means that there are five LS processes running on the Unix system. So to summarize, there is one LS program, and in this particular example there are five LS processes. For a program to become a process, it is simply loaded into memory by the operating system and started. While it is running, it is known as a process, and when it's finished, it is no longer a process, but the single program is still there. OK, I think I've hammered that definition quite enough. Let's move on. Every process on the Unix system, in other words, every running program, is assigned a unique process ID. Sometimes these are also known as PIDs, or just PIDs and they typically have a numeric value in the range 1 to 30,000. So if I run a particular program starting a process and that process is assigned a process ID of 20,000, for example, then the next one I start might be assigned 20,001. Or perhaps somebody else might jump in just ahead of me and grab 20,001 and I might end up with 20,002. Eventually you're going to get to the end and you're going to have process number 30,000 running so what happens when the next one wants to start? Well, theoretically, all 30,000 processes are not still running on the system. Some of them must have finished by now. So there will be some free or empty available process IDs that can be used by the 30,000 first process. This implies that there is a maximum of 30,000 processes that can run simultaneously on any given system. However, this number can change from one system to the next. So, to get down to practicalities, we can actually examine all the processes that are running on a given system by using the ps command. If you type in ps by itself, it will show you the processes that are running just for the current login session. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so I simply type in ps and press enter. And I find that I have two processes running at the time that ps was invoked. One is my shell, bash. Notice the fourth column, that's where you'll find the name of the program. And I also have the PS program running, which is pretty typical. Whenever you use the PS program to list all the running processes, you'll find that at the time, PS is naturally one of those running processes. So you might think to yourself, well, OK, PS sounds like a pretty boring and useless program. Obviously, the only programs I'm ever going to have running when I run the ps command are my shell and the ps command. But there is actually a whole lot more to it than that, and uh, let's have a look at that now. ps can be used with the following command line options. You can specify the minus u option. If you specify minus u followed by a username, it will display all the processes for the given user. Then there's the minus f or minus l options, which both display the regular listing in other words, just the processes for the current login session, but it displays them with more detail. And there's two basically different types of long listings. The minus F listing will give you a different set of details to the minus L listing. And then there's the minus E option, which displays every single running process on the system. And naturally there can be quite a lot of them. All of these options can be used in conjunction with each other, 
well you can't really use the minus E option and the minus U option together but you can use minus E with minus F or minus E with minus L or U with F and so on.